Hey everybody, I'm Ken Brandt and I'm an artist. So in today's video, I'm going to be discussing uh, this particular painting right here of an onion still life that I had done. Uh, I'll go through uh, explaining uh, and showing you the setup that I used for this. Um, I'm working with a piece of glass block, which is I'm using for the uh, background of the onion. And uh, I'll explain some of the colors that I'm using in this painting. And hopefully um, it's something that you will enjoy watching. And if so, make sure you give a thumbs up and a like and if there's anything in the video that you have any questions about whatsoever particularly um, a, something that I'm doing in the painting or a technique that you see me using that maybe you would like me to explain further then definitely by all means leave a comment in the comment section below and I'll make sure I answer that. Also you'll notice in the video that I do some talking in the beginning of the video and then I get involved in the painting and I actually stop talking. So in that particular instance, what I've done is I've sped the, the uh, video up so um, that way it just, you know, you're not bored with just silence and me painting, which uh, I'm sure maybe some of you don't have a problem with. I think I would. So I speed the video up and I'll do a voiceover on those parts and uh, explain what I'm doing. Because um, it's something I'm working on. I'm not very good at completely talking through the painting. I do get involved into the painting and I just I'm just working on the painting not realizing that I need to explain to you what I'm doing and sometimes I I neglect that. I'm working on it. Uh, bear with me. The video should get better and um, yeah so here's the painting. Okay, so I got a 8x10 canvas here, and my setup is right here in front of me to my right. And I am going to uh, paint the onion in front of the glass block. Now, I'm still working with the glass block. If you recall, last time I did a apple behind the glass block. So this time we're going to try something in front of the glass block, get the reflection of light and shadow behind the object see what we can get going here. So this um, this really dark color is asphaltum and ivory black mixed together. And I usually like to start with my darker colors first. And I work my way to my lighter colors. And then a lot of times I like to end with the highlights. And that kind of like makes everything pop right at the very end. Sometimes if I re you know if the, the if the effect of light is going to be my focal point sometimes I will try to start with that so I have that already established and uh, go from there but you know sometimes it's just easier just to get all your darks in first and then get all your lights in sometimes it just works out best to do it that way So I'm putting in my shadows, my darkest spots. 
darkest shadow areas. Okay, so pretty much from this point on is when I just stop talking all together. I do mention a couple of things here and there uh, briefly, but not by much. And it, again, like I said in the beginning of this video, it is something I'm working on. Hopefully I will get better at it and make these videos a bit more enjoyable to watch as far as information goes and as far as talking during the painting process, it's, it's tough, you know, you get involved in it and you're concentrating and you're just not thinking about anything else except what it is you're working on. So here in the painting process, I'm still working on my darkest darts within the background, which is the glass block that is set up. So this is the the darkest reflections of um, the, I have a sheet behind the glass block and that's the darkest part, the shadow part of that that's coming through. And I'm using a mixture of the uh, ivory black, um, there is some cadmium yellow and some ultramarine violet and that's um, the what I'm using for the, the dark color here. and really liking how it looks as far as the, the darkness of it. Kind of the background here I'm kind of making it you know kind of blurry sort of if you will so really not committed to anything specific to see how it goes. So the technique that I'm using while I'm painting here is kind of more of a scumbling technique and when you're scumbling your paint, uh, your the paint is relatively dry on the brush. I don't have any medium whatsoever on the brush. So the paint is just when you're going across the canvas, it's kind of just sticking to the very surface of the canvas. It's not actually working its way into the valleys of the weed on the canvas itself. So that, and, and it's kind of like a scumbling technique. And this comes in really super handy uh, later on in the painting when you're trying to... It's not light enough. When you're trying to put a color over the top of another color and you don't want to, like, get a... You know permeate that color completely within the, the that area you just want to like a just a touch of that color you can scumble it on and it's a very nice technique this might be this might be light enough so yeah those are my <laughs> my small little tidbits, my moments where I'm actually saying something, and it's not much, but, you know, it's letting you know where I'm at in my thought process anyway, while I'm doing the painting. So, at least you're getting a slight insight as to what Ken Brandt thinks while he tries to create the next masterpiece on his easel, if you will. So yeah, what you see me working on here is now I'm working on the lighter colors, the lighter values within that I'm seeing in my still life setup. And I'm still working on the fabric in the front. And now the fabric that I'm, I have on my backdrop, uh, or on my setup anyway, is a bluish, kind of like a, like a dark navy blue color. So where the light is hitting it, um, it's really kind of like a light blue gray. So what I'm using is I got some Payne's gray here mixed with some titanium white. And that is with the, the gray that I'm using for this particular area here. And what I'll do is I'll accent any shadow areas 
you know, where they blend together. And I'll, I'll use that same color, but I'll mix in some ivory black to uh, blend that in to show where the light and the, sh the dark uh, values meet. Okay. going on in here so uh, just nothing to now when I chose this onion for this setup on this painting I wasn't really looking for the onion of onions to paint here, which ideally that's what you want to do. I just pretty much reached in the bag of onions and pulled one out and said, okay, I'll paint this one. Um, I then decide later to do another onion painting. And I, in that case, I actually go to the store and I handpicked and select an onion at the store that I think is worthy of doing a painting of. But in this one here, I just pretty much just grabbed any onion out of the bag and set it up. I was more interested in just trying to paint the onion, get the colors down, um, and almost like as if I was preparing myself for a second painting. That was my thought anyway. Okay, let's get this onion in here. I think we should get the onion. Well, I think. So for the colors of the onion, I'm going to be using the yellow ochre, a lot of yellow ochre, with a mixture of uh, Windsor lemon and cadmium yellow and some asphaltum in the darker areas of the onion, the shadow areas of the skin. But in this particular onion, I do have a brownish area uh, where the older skin is and I do have some fresher skin uh, showing at the top of the onion. And I found out that it's really not a white color even though an onion you know when you think of an onion think white you know for the color for the top or the you know the inside the fresh part of the onion but it's not in this case I really found it to be more of a gray a really light gray and so I do use the color of the Payne's gray just mix a tiny bit of it mixed in with titanium white uh, for that and then I used the mixture of the cadmium yellow and the ultramarine violet for the greenish area of the onion and I felt that this it, it, it mimicked it pretty closely I was quite happy with the result of that mixing of those colors together for that green and you'll see me using that here near the top of the onion right now I'm still working on the very lighter part of the uh, onion skin and I'll start mixing in some darker areas where I see that they're needed. Now basically I'm just concentrating on filling in the areas on the front of the onion. There's a couple little pieces of skin that are that are there and I'm going to fill those areas in. Because generally when I'm doing a painting, one of the things I really like to do first is I like to get all of the color on the canvas. Now I'm working with a, 
I believe this canvas is 8x10, so it's not a huge canvas by any means, but I have found that um, a lot of times, like let's say for example this was a 9x12 or an 11x14, I probably would spend just as much time painting on those canvases which are a bit, more, a bit larger than I would be working on this 8x10. So it sometimes it doesn't seem to matter. I, I just grabbed um, the canvas I thought would work best for this. I ran out of um, uh, canvases that are uh, uh, linen, Belgian linen on a uh, uh, board surface. Um, I will be picking up some more of those because I really enjoy working on a much smoother surface. It comes in handy when you're trying to do detail work. So that's, you know, that's what I'm working on here. I'm working on a, a regular canvas, store bought, uh, not super expensive. I believe they are um, Frederick's can canvases, nothing uh, particularly fancy. Um, sometimes what I'll do, I don't, because like I said, I like working on a smoother surface. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll take some some gesso and place that. I'll I'll paint the canvas mm -hmm. on that uh, with the gesso, and then I'll let it dry, and then I'll sand it, and then I'll put another layer of gesso on there. And basically, gesso is just acrylic paint. So, and you can always put oil on top of acrylic, but you cannot go acrylic on top of oil. So I'll put the white acrylic paint down first, let it dry, sand it put another layer on it, sand it, put a third layer on it, sand it, then I'll see how it feels. And generally that gets rid of the deep valleys within the canvas and it gives me a much smoother surface to work on. And I can really put in some finer details at that point when I'm doing my painting on a surface like that. So here I am, you can see I'm mixing the asphaltum and some burnt umber in with the yellow ochre to give me these uh, darker brownish areas. They're kind of a brownish red, so that's why I went with the burnt umber color of the onion. And here I got some titanium white mixed in with there. Um, because on the this side of the onion, even though the light is facing the from the left and is facing towards the right, on the right, very right side of the onion, there is a uh, reflection of light actually bouncing maybe it's bouncing off the adjacent wall or something and it's coming back onto the onion so I do have a light area on that side of the onion even though the light source is not shining in that direction All in all, when I was painting this, I was relatively pleased with the results I was getting while I was painting this particular uh, setup with the onion. I had never done an onion before. This is my first time attempting an onion. So I wasn't sure about all the colors I wanted to use. You know, it's not like when, when you paint an apple, you already know you paint got some reds and you've got some greens and uh, some browns. You know, the colors are relatively simple to figure out. Onion, it really is a plethora of different colors within the onion. Skin is more complex color-wise and value-wise than you would actually believe. So I thought this was a good practice for me um, to paint this onion. And I was pleased with it, and I did already know in the back of my mind that I was going to do another painting of an onion. Like I said, I was very pleased with the results of this, but after standing back and looking at it when I was done, I felt it just wasn't uh, rich enough. I do like to have a very rich look to it, and this particular painting just didn't have that for me. And I could have worked it more after I was done with it to try to get that, but sometimes because it is a small painting, I just figured, okay, let's leave this one the way it is, 
and just paint another one. And I believe I painted the next onion with a much larger canvas. Not much larger, but larger than this one. Bigger than 8x10. And I was very pleased with the results of that one as well. So I have decided after painting this particular painting and knowing full well that I did another painting of an onion that this is just the beginning of a multitude of onion paintings. Just like you know with an apple, I have painted an apple numerous times, at least ten times that I'm aware of. And same with grapes, I've painted grapes a number of times as well. So I think an onion uh, will serve as a very good source for a still life setup. You can do a lot with the skin. You can pull it back, you can peel it off, you can make, you know, you can make some interesting effects with the skin and to try to get that translucency uh, within your painting. You know, how you can actually see through the onion skin. And it's not so much seeing through it as it is you know that that it's it's not completely solid so you can actually just you know try to work your paint and your values to give that transparent uh, view So what I ended up doing is I ended up getting uh, a lot of the color on the canvas and then I pretty much waited. I let it sit for overnight and then I started working on it the next day. And what this does is allows me to uh, put colors over the top of other colors without uh, too much mixing going on because then the color underneath is already set up and it's not so um, you know malleable as far as you know being, it doesn't blend well with the color you're putting over the top of it that is the benefit when you're doing a la prima you know you're doing a painting completely all at the same time uh, wet on wet uh, a lot of times I refer to it that is one of the benefits of working wet on wet is because you can blend those colors together and sometimes that isn't the effect that you're looking for so what I end up doing is I actually end up letting the paint sit overnight and you know actually harden or stiffen up uh, to the point where I can work over it without too much blending happening and this will uh, lends me to a certain effect that I'm looking for within the painting.
for coaching and information on how to move your painting to the next level. Make sure you give me a call at area code 607-481-9442. That's area code 607-481-9442. And make sure you visit my website at kennethbrandt.com. And while you're there, sign up for my email newsletter and be uh, placed into a drawing for a free painting. So again, remember, visit kennethbrandt.com and call area code 607-481-9442.